Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this really easy, beautiful, misty mountain landscape. This is perfect for beginners at any level. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. First off, you're gonna need a rounded brush with a fine tip. I'm gonna be using my go-to brush, which is a size eight by Silver Black. Then you're also gonna need a water cup. This is to mix and clean your brush. Then I'm going to be using a ceramic plate. This is to mix and prepare my colours, but you can use whatever palette you have. And because this is a wet on wet technique, we're going to need a cold pressed paper, 140 pounds. This is by Canson and it's really affordable. Then for colours, we're going to be using indigo, which is a very nice blue. And into that, we'll be adding Payne's grey to mute it and darken it slightly. Then you're going to need masking tape, this is to create a really nice border around your painting and to also hold down the paper. You need to mix six shades of indigo and grey going from lightest to darkest like I have already prepared here. Just add more indigo and grey and less water for each shade. This is going to give us that really nice contrast when making this landscape today. Then grab any piece of scrap paper you have and we're going to swatch each colour just to be sure the shades are getting darker each time. If you swatch and see that it is the same or lighter than the shade before, then you just want to go ahead and add more indigo and a little bit more grey to the mix. Just like for this third one, I had to add some more indigo to the mix as it wasn't dark enough and now I can see that it is clearly dark. So you just want to keep repeating this until you've gone through all of your six colours and you can see that each shade you have already prepared is getting darker each time. Now that we have our colours mixed and ready to go, you just want to begin by wetting your paper with water. We need it to be wet, but not too wet. You should not have any pulls on the paper. We're going to go in with our first layer, which is the light wash. And we're just gonna be putting this all over the paper, going into every corner. And this is just to create the very light sky effect. And then you're just gonna take diagonal brush strokes to give the effect of the sky. And you want to wait until your paper is dry before we go in with our second layer and we're just going to be using like a shaking hand vibration and when we create mountains we need to remember that some are more pointed and some are more round and then we can also have flat mountains so we just need to bear in mind that these need to vary and we're not trying to create any type of pattern we want this to look very natural and I'm just taking down the color and dragging it down the paper so that it overlaps the second mountain so that when I apply it will be darker. So I'm just going to finish the second color that I have on my plate and I'm just going to be applying it all over the paper and I'm just going to wait for it to dry before we go on to our second layer. Then we're going in with the second mountain. This is going to be darker and just using different shapes, some more round, some more triangular, and just keep a very light and shaking hand so that the mountains look rocky. And we're just gonna be dragging this down and we're gonna be repeating this process for the third, fourth, and fifth mountain. And as you get lower, you want to space out the mountains further. So you want there to be a bigger gap. So these mountains are quite close, but when we're gonna go for the next layer, we're going to be doing it slightly further away. And then for the fifth mountain, it's going to be even a bigger space. This is just to give the appearance that the mountains are getting closer which will give the illusion of a very natural and beautiful landscape. We we're just going to keep repeating the process of taking the darker shade and bringing it all the way down to the paper so that the paper becomes darker each time. So when you go on to the next layer, it already has a dark background, which will make the color that we're applying even darker.
So for this layer we're going to be painting little trees in the distance to give the illusion of a forest and you just want to use the fine tip of your brush and make sure that it's not oversaturated with paint and we're just going to be making straight lines we're going to make some slightly taller some with a bit more space some with a little closer together you just want it to vary and we're just going to be completing the layer with these trees and this is just going to give a very nice effect so for our last layer, we're going to be using a very concentrated mix of Payne's Grey with indigo mixed inside of it. I had to paint three layers, so depending on which paints you use, you may have to do more layers or you may not have to do as many, but we want a very, very dark, saturated layer for the last one. And so here I am going in with the second layer, so I'm just waiting for it to be dry completely before going in with your next layer, otherwise it will take the paint off of your page and you will have to start again um, with your first layer. So you just wanna keep going over until it's dark enough. So for my third layer, it definitely was dark enough, so I stopped there. However, you will know your paper, you will know the paint you're using, and you'll be able to tell when you can't see through anymore, and that's how you know it's dark enough. Next, we're going to be painting some big trees and you wanna take the same mix of the concentrated uh, indigo and paint gray and we're just gonna be doing a sort of dabbing and pulling, pushing technique. You just wanna hold your brush lightly and you're gonna be pushing and sometimes you're going to push down on the paper and then pull away. So you're gonna get longer strokes and smaller strokes and you just wanna keep repeating this process all the way down until the tree is covered and the tree is larger at the bottom than it is at the top. So you just want to make sure that you are adding more dabs and more sort of leaves towards the bottom than at the top. So you get this really lovely cone shape. And we're just gonna be repeating the same technique for, for a few more other trees as well. And this is just a very simple and easy way and it gives a really, really nice effect towards the end. This step is optional, so if you're happy with your painting and you don't want to do anything else, then you can stop here. If not, you can add some birds like I am doing. I decided to add just a few birds going in different directions, and I thought it would just add a nice scenery and just tie it all in together. So you can just do this by sort of doing a V shape, and you can make some smaller and some larger, just to give a nice effect. When removing your masking tape, to make sure that you don't rip your paper, you want to remove it 
at a 45 degree angle and you don't want to be pulling the tape upwards, you want to be pulling it towards the surface so it's very flat. This will make sure that it doesn't rip the paper and it doesn't pull away any of the cellulose or the cotton, whatever your paper is made from. This is a very simple trick and it works every time. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I will be posting more tutorials weekly and I can't wait to see you in the next video.